Ladies and gentlemen, we have emergency exits on either side of the boat, top deck and lower level. In the unlikely event of an emergency, uniform crew members will help and assist in the downing of PFDs or personal flotation devices. You are more than welcome to get up and move around the boat, watch your step at all times, do use caution on the staircases. We ask of everyone to not stand on the benches or chairs. Once again, please do not stand on the chairs or benches. We just don't want you to fall and we don't want anybody to fall overboard. We ask everyone to refrain from smoking and if you have any trash or garbage, please use our trash can. Do not throw anything on the deck and please do not throw anything overboard. Try to keep the boat and the water as clean as possible. We have washrooms down below inside the cabin as well as a full service bar. Keep in mind that if you visit the indoor portion of the vessel to use the restroom or visit the bar, you are required to wear your face mask. So if you visit down below, please make sure you are wearing your face mask indoors. You see a flag waving in the, the Chicago flag. You might have seen it all around our city. All right, those two blue stripes, three white stripes and four red stars. The blue is to represent our waterways, the river and the lake. The three white stripes would be the north side, south side, and west side. Now we really wave this flag everywhere, right? You've probably seen it on t-shirts, hats, and bars. People have this tattoo, right, on their arms. Uh, you might be able to find uh, someone on the boat with a, a Chicago flag tattoo. But those four red stars, I'll start with the one because we're right at the site, roughly where Fort Dearborn stood. So if you look at the side of get there, to get through, to get through. Which I will talk about Jean Baptiste Point du Sable. But just so you guys get a perspective, the Michigan, Michigan Avenue used to be the easternmost point to our city. The Chicago only came as far as Michigan Avenue. Technically, right here is where the river would have met the lake. So, after years, you know, on different projects of development, landfill, after that great Chicago fire, we had a lot of rubble and ruin, pushed out our shoreline, filled up the lake. And there's other landfill as well on the north side, which I'll explain once we get out on the water. And basically, to the left and to the right, you are now, as of now, looking at artificial landfill and not an actual landmass from the city if you were here 200 years ago. Right now, Michigan Avenue Bridge, renamed Dusable Bridge. I mentioned Jean Baptiste Point Dusable, our first non native permanent settler here at what was once the mouth of the river, right? He had his homestead or his estate, roughly where you see that apple store. A man of Haitian descent. He spoke French, English, and the local Native American language here. He married a Potawatomi woman. So you can imagine how successful your trade would be if this was the case for you. But as we pass these blocks, after about 10 years or so, began to crack and crumble. They had to take it all off and reclad the building floor by floor in North Carolina granite, which is why they say, because from North Carolina, Oh, nice. I've never been down there. But anyway, that's why they say you, you certainly cannot take marble for granted. Okay. It's terrible. It's a terrible joke. Okay, on the right side here. The Aqua Building coming up with the baby balconies by Gina Yang. Here we go on the right. 2009. She's a local architect. Kind of the talk of the town. There's a couple reasons for those balconies. Number one, her aesthetic. She's inspired by the lithographs on the shores of the Great Lakes. Number two, they are extensions of the floor plates. They do help break up the strength of that wind. Number three, they help for the birds not to fly into the building. And last but not least, Judy Gang talks about how it can be isolating to live in high rises such as these, right? A little harder to meet your neighbors. So no balcony is the same. You can walk outside your balcony and wave hello to your neighbor above or below or to the left or to the right. Now the aqua and the lake. Our newest neighbor at the park just next to us on the right side, you might have already caught a peek, right? That's six shades of blue glass, curvy profile, three-decker, gorgeous skinny tower, the St. Regis Chicago. The third tallest building in the city of Chicago now by Jeannie Gang, that architect who did the aqua. 
It kicked Aeon down to number four. This is also the tallest building in the world designed by a woman or a lead female architect. Right? Now, if you look at the tallest tower, there's a couple floors that are left completely open, right? They're empty. This is on purpose, but not part of the original design. The building did not pass its wind sharing exam. The wind gets very strong at the top of these skyscrapers, right? They're all meant to sway a couple inches, whichever way. But you don't want to make the millionaires too nauseous in their penthouses. They didn't have to blow out those floors, right? As below the floors. To mitigate the strength of that wind that comes right through, with the exception of the core of the building, the elevators, of course. All right, let's see. We're going to come out to our lake soon. And I do have a bit of history of our city and of our river. I'll sit down for it. Now, Chicago was a very industrial town. And it's no surprise that a giant city ended up in this spot, right? We're at a very geographically strategic point in this country to become a center of commerce. Right? The railroads converging here. If you're going east to west, west to east, this is no flyover state. You're coming to Chicago. Now, they become the center of the catalogs, right? Montgomery Ward, Monkey Ward. We have Sears and Roebuck as well. They become the center of the lumber industry, the meatpacking industry. We had the world's largest slaughterhouse on the south side. Fashionable meat products around the nation. In the 1800s, we're dumping our industrial waste and our personal sewage into the Chicago River. And like many bodies of water, it flowed into the larger adjacent body of water, which would be Lake Michigan, right? A freshwater gem of the world. They all sued the city of Chicago because they thought that we would empty the lake. No, it would take a millennia to empty a lake of this stature. But the lawsuit lasted 28 years, went all the way to the Supreme Court, and the solution to that lawsuit, the Chicago Harbor Lock. You are looking uh, we're in the lock right now, actually. We're in, yeah, we just stayed in the lock. Okay, so in order to get from this river to that lake, that lake to this river, you have to come through this lock. Again, it's a more of a controlled flow, a start and stop, rather than a constant drainage. So really to mitigate that flow of the lake water getting down all the way to the Gulf takes about three weeks. Uh, let's see, so the lake is about four or five feet higher than the river. So if you guys look on the left lock wall, you can see the water line where the concrete color changes. That's how high up we're going to go. Um, what they're going to do is, first of all, the lock has been open since 1938, right? It's run by the Army Corps of Engineers. This is their control center on our west side. Um, you know, they built it, they operate it. Their flag is behind us, the red flag with the white castle on it. And it operates 24-7. This is a federal waterway where you can literally pull up in this lock, doesn't matter what time of day, and you just radio in, they'll open it for you. Now there is a hierarchy to the lock, government boats are first, um, so you know, if you're the fire department, the boats behind us, uh, if you're US Coast Guard, Water Reclamation District, CPD, your first priority getting through the lock. Second priority would be commercial vessels like ourselves, and like our little lock buddy behind the gates that go near the airport, and we will be on our very way through. Um, but I want you guys to enjoy the lock. If you have any questions, please uh, let me know.
say gets you to appear? Why? It's the same plan that wants our lake to be, our lakefront, to be open, free, and clear to the public, right? For recreational, for parkland. They go to other waterfront cities, they're going to go to one of the waterfronts, and that's actually probably a 20 mile because the beaches, marinas, what? Thank you. 
is my land, right? This is not associated with the city of Chicago. It's not associated with the United States of America. He, I forgot what it was called. He had like a name for it, like it was his own country, right? Uh, now, of course, when George Streeter died, the city reclaimed that acreage, named it Streeterville in his memory. Uh, again, just behind Navy Pier and the filtration centers, that kind of cluster where it's a lot of uh, luxury condos and rentals now. But if you're in the Streeterville neighborhood, there is a restaurant The city was built in wood, and we were also in the middle of a drought. In just three months, we saw only an inch and a half of rain to the firemen, about 165, the entirety of the city, were already a little burnt down from putting out fires earlier in the week, right? They were popping up earlier that week. Now, why didn't the river act as a barrier for the fire? Well, the, the oil and the grease floating on parts of it was flammable. But most notably, the, the strong wind easily took it eastward and northward. Uh, right now, there's not many surviving structures that you see from the fire today. You know, not many buildings that you see in Chicago older than 1871. If you are by the water tower place, famously we have that water pump station that survived the Chicago fire. Uh, now, a horrible tragedy for the city. 100,000 people left homeless. 17,000 structures burned to the ground, and 300 people died. There's that shot. I, the captains never take us this close to the show. Uh, now, we do commemorate that fire with the second star in our Chicago flag. Now, that was a horrible tragedy. It was kind of a reset button for Chicago because the city that you see before you today would not exist as it does today if it were not for that Chicago fire, right? We have this opportunity to build a second city, which is why we're called the second city. It's not because we're second to New York, as they might like you to believe, but it is because this is the second city of Chicago built on the rubble and ruin of our old Chicago, and this time designed with very uh, you know, well-intentioned, very, very planned out city, right? We have our grid system, our L system, uh, our open lakefront, our alleyways for our trash, our diagonal streets to get to different places of the city on easier, the boulevards for beautiful residential spaces and trees, um, very strict fire codes, of course, the reason for all those back porches in our neighborhoods. You have an entrance on either side of your home, although it is ironic, all the porches are made of wood. But let's see, on the left side, or on the skyline here, I love this view of South Michigan Avenue, right? You have the older buildings of the late, eight, late 19th, early 20th century, right? All the old hotels and older, like Adler and Sullivan.
entertainment and showmen to bring exotic dances from the east that you normally wouldn't see here in the west, essentially belly dancing. Um, Buffalo Bill, a little too lowbrow to be officially accepted into the program for the fair. He set up camp just next to the fair, took advantage of the tourists coming through. H.H. Holmes also famously took advantage of the tourists coming through. Uh, now, how could I forget, Nikola Tesla's alternating current. Imagine coming in from a small town and seeing this city light up in electricity and inspire the Emerald City and the Wizard of Oz. It really was a cultural reset. Right? Uh, it brought tourism and income to the city, but most importantly, it put Chicago on the map as a city to be respected, right? a city that could pull off a fair of that grandeur, a city of culture and prestige that should be up there in the rankings with our neighbors to the east who might have looked down on us at the time, right? maybe DC or Boston or New York. Right? Now, uh, we do commemorate that fair with the third star on our Chicago flag, the fourth being the Century of Progress Fair in 1933. So if you guys are ever in trivia, the, the four stars on the Chicago flag are four Fs, Fort, Fire, Fair, and Fair, right? Fort Dearborn of 1803, Chicago Fire of 1871, World's Columbian Exposition of 1893, and the Century of Progress in 1933, Fort, Fire, Fair, and Fair. Uh, but let's see. I usually do better with my timing. Usually we're like out of here and we're going. Uh, but I do want to point out a little bit. First of all, there's a, the glass house. Remember I said the conservatory with all the, the tropical plants just behind our uh, navy, uh, the Ferris wheel. Also the Ferris wheel. This is our third Ferris wheel uh, on the pier, the centennial wheel. So if anyone else who's a bathroom, I would probably do it sooner rather than later. Also, if you, we can't take alcohol drinks off the boat. Oh, wait, I think we are going to do the full bridge. The Let me ask to get from the south end to the north end of the trail. Actually, and if you're here over, they typically do it over Memorial Day, although with COVID, they did it over Labor Day this year. Once a year, they close down Lakeshore Drive and you can bike the drive, right? You can bike just on the Lakeshore Drive. It's really cool, actually. It's really fun, too. Uh, now, on our right here, we have Riverview 1 and Riverview 2 with the orange brick and the green accents, the trees in front of it. I have less architecture facts, more real estate. Riverview 2, the left building with the current and the 800,000 gallons of blue glacial water that comes in and churns it all together every time those lock gates open. I know what you're going to say, Georgia, don't you dye the river green. I don't personally do it, but on St. Patrick's Day, the Plumbers Union uses a vegetable based, it's actually an orange dyed secret recipe, and it dyes this river a neon pally green. It's quite the sight to see, but not the reason for the color that you see before you today. If you look to the right, I don't want to miss it, because I know I've got some New Yorkers on the boat. This building might look familiar to you. Right, it looks like 30 Rockefeller Center or NBC Tower. Uh, Art Deco throwback by Skidmore Owings and Merrill. They wanted their Chicago offices to look like their New York headquarters, their own little piece of 30 Rock here. But coming up next hour, uh, yeah, it's crazy. And he's now designing the next tallest building in the world which will be two and a half times this height, will be in Saudi Arabia. Again, that's Adrian Smith, a Chicagoan. Um, and you know, I don't know why you want to build that tall, but I guess if there's a will, there's a way, I suppose, and the money to do it, right? We need that too. 
Now, neighbors to the Trump, we're still on the right side of the belt. This beautiful black tower, it is very simple. This modernism or internationalism style by Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, right? That modernism is a simple black box. Glass and steel are the stars here. No unnecessary ornamentation. Mises' philosophy, less is more. Now he went on to become one of the most influential architects of the 20th century. This is actually one of the last projects he designed. He taught at the Illinois Institute of Technology, was the director of the architecture department. He came from the Bauhaus School in Germany where one of his students, Bertrand Goldberg, designed Marina City to our right side, aptly nicknamed the Corn Cob Towers. These were the tallest residential buildings in the world when they went up in the early mid 60s. At that time, people were moving to the suburbs. So the city wanted to bring people back downtown. They equipped these buildings with a bowling alley, an ice skating rink, which is now the Smith and Walensky Steakhouse, a movie theater, which is now the House of Blues, a supermarket, a bank, all of these amenities that you might want or need in order to be convinced to move to a high rise downtown. The elevators are at the core of those cogs. They give it as a stem of puddles. The apartments are pie shaped. They're narrow when you walk in, wider as you walk through. Your balcony, the widest part of your unit. And for those who are wondering, there have been two cars that have fallen off the sides of those 19 four parking lots into the Chicago River. I love the reaction of both instances on purpose. <laughs> One was for a movie, The Hunter, and the other was for an all state commercial which I think is rather clever, right? All state is headquartered here in the Chicagoland area. You can YouTube that commercial. Now on our right side, you're looking at a 1914 building, the Reed Murdoch Center, a warehouse. Remember, if you were on this river over 100 years ago, it would look very different than it does today. You'd see ships loading and unloading cargo, manufacturing plants, right? It'd be bustling with industry. Reed Murdoch this is asymmetrical, first of all, on the left side, there's one less bay of windows, sorry to make it look bad. Imagine what this building has seen go up in its day, literally everything else that you see around it. Now Chicago, tries, we try to be a green city, right? 300 North LaSalle with the trees in front of it is made of recycled steel. It has a green roof where a vegetation or a garden at the top helps to drain the rainwater, let oxygen into the air. Also, doesn't use traditional air conditioning and uses the river water to cool the building. It is for these reasons and not more that 300 North LaSalle has a lead platinum rating that is leadership in energy and environmental design. Of course, platinum, the highest certification that you can achieve. Let's see, on our right we have a mammoth piece of limestone here. Swampy marshland, imagine around this river, no skyscrapers. This would be your town center. It's a very logical place to put your town center. It is where the north branch, the south branch, and the main branch converge. Our first inn was here, our first tavern, public meetings, public debates. And back when they were trying to name this area, they noticed the Native American community referring to it as Chicago. And what were they really referring to? The wild, smelly onions, leeks, and garlic growing on the banks of these waters. So I like to say, if you want to go to the Big Apple, you go to New York City. But if you're coming to Chicago, welcome to the smelly onion, ladies and gentlemen. That's a literal translation for the name of our city. All right, I guess we're going to the South Branch on the right here. We have a building that looks like it was built upside down. How did they get the base of that building so skinny but there's 54 stories stacked above it. 2017, your architects are gushing partners. There's something at the top called a mass damper system. About 160,000 gallons of water in six concrete silos will sway or slosh to the opposite direction that the wind is blowing in order to keep that building in equilibrium. Mass damper systems don't traditionally use water as their counterweight but there are a few buildings here that do so. A couple buildings here, that's one of them. A Hunter North River sign on our right, the Boeing International Headquarters, built in 1990 for the Morton Salt Company. If you look where it says the Boeing store at the corner, and look up how five pillars toward the boat, this section of the building is suspended from the top down. It's built over switch tracks, which take up a lot of space, right? You can see the vents or the screens here. Now, 
the switch tracks in the real world, they had to get a little creative here. They didn't have enough room to lay down their caissons. So once we pass the bridge, if you look back and you look up, you will see those X white steel trusses that are holding up the building, right? Hanging it from that top down, kind of defying gravity there in that southwest corner. Now on our right, we have a 1929 Art Deco building, two North Riverside Plaza, initially the home of the Chicago Daily News. If you look on either side of the clock, you see carvings of people writing or etching things into stone to pay homage to our human history of reporting and recording. Now, if you wanted to build on the railroad tracks, and I'm not lying here, if you look at eye level, you see that train inside there. Is there a train in there? Yeah, I think there should be. The railroad companies has something called air rights construction. So you have, they own the air above the tracks themselves. The railroad companies own the air above their tracks. So you have to buy the right to Merrill. That is your architecture firm, very well known, very well accomplished. Bruce Graham is your lead architect. He teams up with Fosler Khan, the same gentleman who do those X braces on the Hancock, is the structural engineer for the Sears. Uh, he's said to be the Einstein of structural engineering from Bangladesh. No, it's actually 975 by 75 foot boxes or tubes, nine individual towers bundled together into one, which is why it has that shape, right? They all top off at different heights. If you looked at it from an aerial view, it'd be a three by three. Only two of those towers or boxes reach the highest height of the building. The way the story goes, Bruce Graham and Fowler Khan were out to lunch. One of them took out a pack of cigarettes. And when you lift a cigarette out of the box, it can get higher out of said box if it is packaged tightly with the cigarettes underneath it. As opposed if you were trying to stack them up one by one, they would just fall over, right? So five. The oldest building we've seen today, actually. there called the Wigwam, where the Republican National Convention was held, and they nominated Abraham Lincoln. First of all, 225 West Wacker Drive. You look up, there's a little bridge at the top. It looks like bridge houses on either side. Pays homage to our 38 movable or workable bridges here. Again, 38 movable bridges, second in the world, only second to Amsterdam, which has over 100. The majority of our bridges are bascule trunnion bridges. Bascule in French means a distribution of weight or a 